Hello, hello, hello. This is Coach Ikram, and welcome to our first video for the electron unit. This first video is going to cover properties of light. The first thing about light that's important to note um, is that it can behave as both a wave and a particle. We're going to talk a lot about waves in this particular unit. Um, but the fact that it can also behave as a particle um, is kind of the fundamental basis for our quantum theory of our quantum mechanical model. Um, the, the idea that light can behave as both a wave and a particle is known as the duality of light or the duplicity of light. So let's talk about it as a wave first. Light travels through space as a wave, and waves have three primary characteristics. The first is wavelength. The second is frequency, and the third is speed. And we're going to talk about each of these individually. The most important thing to note here, though, is that frequency, even though it has an F right here, on your, um, your sheet that you'll be given for tests, your reference sheet, it's going to be referenced as a V. So frequency is, is seen as both so that you know, you know that it can be seen as both an F and a V, but we will use V for our symbol for frequency. Wavelength. Talking about wavelength is the distance between two consecutive crests or max values on your wave or the troughs or the minimum values. So if you're looking at a wave down here, we've got a crest and a crest, and the wavelength is the distance between those two. And you can also do it from trough, if this wave continued, from trough to trough. And that would be the same distance as from crest to crest. This is going to be measured in meters, and again, the sim symbol is a lambda symbol, and that's drawn by just drawing a little swirly and then making it kind of an upside down V. Frequency is the number of wave cycles that successive crests or troughs on our wave that are going to pass a given point per unit of time. So for example, if I put a point above both of these waves over here, you'll notice the top wave is going to have a very high frequency. These crofts, these crofts, these crests and troughs are going to pass that point at a very high frequency. They're going to pass more often. And down here, when we have the low frequency, from trough to trough in this case, it's going to pass less frequently or at a less steady rate. This is going to be measured in cycles per second, which is notated like that, but we call that hertz, and that's notated just like that. And the symbol, again, can be an F, but we will typically use a V. So it's important to note that that's what you'll see more often. And speed, the last um, idea behind waves of light, is a constant for all forms of light. The speed of light is 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And that's pretty quick. Um, but you also have to kind of have to think of it in terms of like the great you know, space in the universe. If you've got light traveling from a star, for example, and they're you know, hundreds of billions of miles away, it's going to take a long time for that light to reach us, which is why you have that idea that when you're looking at a star, um, you're seeing light from you know, millions of years ago, and it's because light can only travel this fast, 3.00 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. And our symbol for that is going to be C. So all of this kind of comes together at what we call the electromagnetic spectrum, and you're looking at kind of a very rudimentary version of it. We've got... Um, We've got some fancy little pictures here. And the important thing to note is that you've got your wavelength and your frequency kind of on either end of this. We've got wavelength up here in meters. We've got our frequency down here in hertz. So on the far left-hand side of the spectrum, we have radio waves. Those have a very a long wavelength, as you can see kind of on my, electromag my electromagnetic spectrum, very long wavelength, um, and therefore a very small frequency. Then we have microwaves. They have a bit of a smaller wavelength, a little bit higher frequency. Then we have infrared. Then we have visible light. And visible light follows Roy G. Biv, which hopefully you learned when you were younger, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Red is the closest to infrared, and that's going to have the highest wavelength, lowest frequency. And then violet over here on the right is going to have the slightly higher frequency. Then we have ultraviolet light, or UV. Then we have X-rays. And finally, gamma rays, which are the most dangerous. And we're going to talk about this in a minute. Because they have such a high frequency over here and a very small wavelength, they're going to have the most energy. So remember the order. If, for whatever reason, you can't memorize it just straight and you need like some sort of handy tool. Riding much in van uses extra gas is a great way to memorize radio, microwave, infrared, visible, UV, X-ray, and gamma. 
So frequency is going to be determined by your wavelength. That's an important concept to note. They are inversely proportional. So if I have something that's extremely frequent, like this, that means my wavelength is going to be very small. If I have something that's less frequent, low frequency, that means my wavelength has gotten bigger. So note that the two are inversely proportional. So this is all going to be notated by this equation. It is the speed of light equals wavelength times frequency. And again, we would write this as the speed of light equals wavelength times frequency. You'd see it both ways, and it's important to know both. So you see that these two, because they're being multiplied by each other in this equation, we've talked about this earlier with um, thermo, these two are going to be inversely proportional. One goes up, the other one goes down. So if we're going to solve a problem with this, it says, what is the frequency of the radiation with a wavelength of 3.82 times 10 to the negative 7 meters? So our equation is C equals wavelength times frequency. We're looking for the frequency, so you can either rearrange or plug in. I prefer to plug in. My speed of light is 3.00 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. My wavelength is 3.82 times 10 to the negative 7th. And I don't know my frequency. Rearrange, solve, and I'm going to get 7.85 times 10 to the 14th hertz. And finally, it does state what is part of the electromagnetic spectrum does this fall. You can look at either one. Depending on what your electromagnetic spectrum is showing you, we see both wavelength and frequency. I'm going to use frequency. We come down here and we note that it's times 10 to the 14th. And you can kind of come down here and you'll note that it falls right about here. That's 10 to the 13th. That's 10 to the 16th. So it's probably going to be on the high end right in there. So the particle nature of light. So remember, we talked about how there's the duality of light. So light can be explained by a wave model, but not all properties of light can be explained by that. So these two guys, Planck and Albert Einstein, who hopefully you recognize his name, they refine the understanding of this to include particles. Light can be described now as a stream of particles or bundles of energy called photons. And the details of this, we're not going to get really into it, but we're going to highlight big time the relationship between energy and light. And we're going to talk a lot about photons um, as we get later into the, into the unit with electrons. But what you need to know right now is that energy and frequency are directly proportional. As your frequency goes up, your energy is also going to go up. So for example, higher frequency over here, higher energy. And this can be stated in this equation. So we've got energy oops, equals Planck's constant times frequency. And remember, we note frequency as a V as well. Planck's constant, max Planck, does not change. It is a constant number, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joules over seconds. So if we're going to solve a problem with that, and use that relationship to solve a problem. How much energy does a photon of light with a frequency of 4.2 times 10 to the 8th hertz have? What part of the electromagnetic spectrum does this fall in? So we've got energy equals Planck's constant times frequency. We don't know the energy. Planck's constant, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 times our frequency, which is 4.2 times 10 to the 8th hertz. And when you solve it out, you get 2.8 times 10 to the 25th, and energy is notated in joules, which should be familiar to you. We have used energy as joules before. And that is it. Our next video is going to be talking about um, the electron clouds and properties of electrons. So hopefully you take good notes, um, come in with questions, and we'll see you in video two. Have a great day.